Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to scan a Fox body Mustang like this, or indeed any OBD1 Ford, Lincoln Mark 7, F-150, whatever you got for codes. And I'm going to show you a little test which is hidden inside the EEC4 system that can be very helpful in diagnosing the health of your engine and it can be very helpful when you're buying a car like this that you can't drive and you can't do much with and you have to make a snap decision on. If you run this test, you're going to have a lot better confidence that the engine is in fact okay. So scanning for codes is actually really simple. I strongly encourage you to get a code reader like this. There is a way to do this with a, a jumper plug and just read the codes off the check engine light. If you're really interested in that, you can look that up on the internet. But a code reader like this costs 30 bucks or something. You can get it from Amazon or Princess Auto probably, uh, Harbor Freight, wherever you buy auto parts. Um, you can usually get something like this, but you can certainly get it from Amazon if none of those guys have it. Uh, this is an older version of this code reader. All it has is a speaker and a little test light and two switches, one to control the audio and one to control whether you're activating the test or holding. And then it's got plugs that plug into the EEC test port on the car. The code reader usually comes with a little book that's got a list of codes and it lists off the tests and how to do the tests. You're also going to want to have a piece of paper and a pen in order to write the codes down. And the way the car is going to provide the diagnostic information is through a series of flashes of the lights and beeps. I think some of these newer uh, versions of these OBD1 uh, code readers actually have a little digital readout that might uh, decode the flashes and actually show you the codes. But on this one, it gives you light flashes and beeps. That's the same kind of thing you'd get if you jumpered the, uh, jumpered the connection and watched the check engine light. So when you get those flashes, you need to be able to write down what the codes are and then you can interpret them from the book. The test port from the factory is located in a little plastic holder like this that's called, it says EEC test on it and is located on the back of the driver's side shock tower on the Mustang. Inside that holder, you're gonna find the test plugs. And you'll notice you got one single plug and one with four connectors on it. And they will plug right in to that EEC4 test connector. Now on most of these cars, this little piece back here is missing. This plug will be loose, but it will be in this general area on the Mustang. Okay, so to do this test, you're going to take your testing tool. You're going to put it on hold and audio on. You're going to plug it in like that. You're going to plug it in like that. And we're going to start with the key on engine off test. Okay, so now we got the key on. We've got our clipboard handy. We've got our tester hooked up and we're going to switch it to test. You'll hear some systems on the car cycling, then you'll get a quick flash like that. One, one, one. One, Okay, uh, the car had some codes earlier. I guess I must have fixed them. I know it had EGR issues. Okay, so there's a one. Three. 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 Okay, so what we saw there was the first uh, set of tests gave me a 1-1, which means clear. That means there's no current codes. Then it lets out a quick one flash. Then it moves into the stored codes. So these are 
codes that are stored that are not actually current. And it gave me a 33. And you'll notice that it repeats. So if there's more than one code, it'll, it'll step up numerically through the codes. And then when it's listed off all the codes, it'll start over again and it'll repeat them twice. All right, so that's our key on engine off test. No current codes and a code 33 is stored. Let me go to our list of codes in the book and we'll look up 33. EGR valve not opening properly. Okay, so I know that there is a problem with the EGR system on the car. There's a vacuum connection which doesn't look right. There was a faulty vacuum cap on there. Um, I did some repairs over there, but obviously I haven't got it uh, completely fixed. That's no big deal, but that's an issue for us to look at going forward. Okay, so we switch that back to hold and that should clear those codes. Our next step is to run the key on engine running test. This is a test you've got to do with the car warmed up, which it is. It's going to run through a few systems on the car that it can test only when it's running. I'm going to check that they're all right. And then it's going to issue a diagnostic based on that. Now, here's, here's the thing you got to know. When you get to the end of the key on engine running test, if within 10 seconds of the last code, you snap the throttle once, the car will enter another test cycle, which is the cylinder balance test. Now, the way the cylinder balance test works is the computer brings the car up to around 1500 RPM. It holds it steady, makes sure that it knows what its RPM is. Then it begins by killing uh, injector number one. So it shuts off the first injector. And what should happen is the engine RPM should drop by a certain amount. And it goes through and does that for each of the eight injectors. Now, if the engine RPM doesn't drop, it means that that cylinder wasn't contributing. So it can alert you to the fact that you've got a cylinder that's not contributing or that is weak. If you get a result from the uh, cylinder balance test, which suggests that you've got a faulty cylinder, you can actually run a second iteration of it by snapping the throttle again within 10 seconds of the end of the first key on engine running test. That will run a more aggressive test and it will, it will give you a little finer resolution on what's, which cylinders are bad and which cylinders are just partially contributing. So that's what we're gonna do. That test can be very helpful in diagnosing a car and it can be very helpful when you're trying to buy a car to try and get a feel for whether the engine is actually okay or not. In fact, it's about the only test that I could really do on this car that was meaningful when I bought it. There was no plate, <laughs> you couldn't drive it, there was low coolant, so you couldn't run it for very long and so on, but I was able to run the cylinder balance test and get a result. Okay, so for the key on engine running test, we're gonna put the uh, tester we're gonna shut the car off. So we just did the key on engine off. We'll put the tester on hold like that. We'll start the car. I can tell you I know this car needs a tune-up. Anyway, now I've got the thing running. Let's go ahead and flick that to test. You'll hear the car rev up as it's doing this test. And it's going to go ahead and perform a bunch of tests. Then the car will idle back down. And 
if you watch. Oh yeah. When it gets done what it's gonna do, we'll get a, a little fast flash here. And that's how we know we're gonna start noting the codes that come off. There. One. Two. One. One, two. Okay, so it gave us a one, one, two. But we want to proceed with the cylinder balance. You can hear that the car is revved up. And you'll hear as it goes through each injector, it should rev down a little bit, then it'll rev back up, rev down a little bit, rev back up as it goes through all eight injectors. Once it's gone through all eight, the engine will idle down and we'll start to get codes. Now, what will happen is, it will give us a numeric code equal to the number of the cylinder or cylinders that it thinks are problematic. Or, if it thinks everything is good, it'll give us a nine. Okay, gave us a nine. That's a clean bill of health. Because we wanted to do the cylinder balance test, we had to jump right into that. So I didn't get a chance to look up what the 12 code is for the Keon engine running test. And it says RPM out of range high. All right, so based on, uh, based on the testing, clearly we got a problem with our EGR system. I know there's some vacuum hookup problems. The valve might be gummed up. Could be all kinds of issues there. It's not critical, uh, but it's something we should have a look at. Um, we got this key on engine running code for RPM out of range high. It's entirely possible that someone has tweaked the throttle stop on the car and turned the uh, idle RPM up beyond what the car expects. And because it can't idle down to its target RPM, it uh, gives this code. Now, the real gem out of all of these tests is the cylinder balance. That gave us a nine. That means that the cylinder balance test passed with no cylinders listed as non-contributing. Like I said, this is a test that's built right into the EEC systems. It's a test that's easy to initiate, although I suspect most guys don't know it's there. And it's a test that can be very helpful when you're either trying to diagnose a car that's got a problem or when you're trying to buy a car and you just don't know whether the engine is okay or not. In fact, <laughs> I bought this car largely on the strength of a pass on the cylinder balance test because whatever else was wrong with it, I thought pretty good chance that the engine is okay because it passed this test. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.